ರಸ್ವೀದಿನ ಜೀವಿತೆ ಕಿಡ್ನಿ ಡಿಸೀಸಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಪ್ಲೇಡ್ ವಿಲೇಜಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಾಧುಕರೆ ಫಾರ್ ಮೆನಿ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ 335 ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲೀಸ್ ದಟ್ ವನ್ಸ್ ರಿಲೈಡ್ ಆನ್ ಇಂಪ್ಯೂರ್ ವಾಟರ್ ದೇರ್ಸ್ ಸಮ್ ಹೋಪ್ ಅ ವಾಟರ್ ಪ್ಯೂರಿಫಿಕೇಶನ್ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ಗಮ್ ಮೆಥರ್ ಗಮ್ ಮೆಥರ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಬೈ ದ ಪೀಪಲ್ News first news line In a democracy when your government says something you can believe it or not but in a dictatorship you believe it or else Good evening welcome to another edition of news line uh, as of this afternoon oh I, be- I beg your pardon as of 2 weeks ago we've been uh, under a state of emergency but today that state of emergency was approved in parliament your representatives uh, the people that you voted for to represent you in the most sovereign body in sri lanka the parliament of sri lanka has decided uh, that uh, sri lankans should live under a state of emergency given the current situation in the country however there are those who agree with this decision there are those who do not agree with this decision and that is a democracy to discuss these matters and more we've got with us today uh, the leader of the sri lanka muslim congress parliamentarian rauf hakim uh, a very good evening sir and welcome to the show good evening uh, shalan um uh, mr hakim i think it's 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 um, quite uh, public as to uh, where you voted or how you voted at uh, today's um, vote that was taken up in parliament on these emergency regulations you voted no but given the situation in the country don't you think that we should live under a state of emergency i mean we did for for the longest time for over 30 years and finally when we were breathing a breath of fresh air now we find ourselves in the middle of a new crisis Yes uh, Shalan with the unprecedented uh, events of the past few weeks and uh, the need to restore normalcy uh, quickly uh, it seems that uh, uh, the current president uh, who had uh, been elected uh, in a proper constitutional way perhaps through parliament but yet uh, for public perception the fact that he uh, was uh, elected by a discredited uh, uh, number of large number of uh, uh, the SLPP led uh, parliamentary group uh, left uh, a feeling of uh, uh, lack of legitimacy for his uh, uh for his uh, you know the, the tenure ahead so with this scenario uh, him resorting to imposing an island wide emergency uh, is uh, somewhat unwar- unwarranted in my opinion because uh, he needs to uh, at a time like this show magnanimity he needs to be seen to be uh, a little more benevolent uh, benevolent and uh, uh, he needs to extend a hand of friendship to those people who have uh, um, created this uh, move un- unprecedented revolution in the country so it i think it it appears that some of them are motivated by a sense of uh, um you know revengeful uh, 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 vindictive uh, when you action. say when you say See, some of them do you mean uh, the parliamentarians who had their houses burnt down during the incidents that transpired on the 9th of june or july i believe it is obviously so because today if you if you listen to the debate in parliament today Uh, most of them kept on harping about the uh, indign- indignities they had to suffer as a result of uh, the uprising they had to face because what you must understand is what happened in the country um, starting from april you know every 9th of the month we had uh, one phase of re- revolution taking place 
and sending home uh, somebody uh, from office you see so uh, it also had uh, um, uh, some I mean the violence that came about uh, in uh, uh, May uh, was as a result of the violence they themselves uh, uh, inflicted mm. on the uh, peaceful demonstrators in uh, so-called Gota Go Gama at, uh, at the golf years. So, you know, th with this type of um, counter violence that took place, I think, uh, of course, none of us uh, condone mob violence, which had uh, happened um, in many parts of the island. Several members of parliament had to uh, lose their um, houses, um, there were a lot of arson attacks, uh, none of which is condoned by the opposition as well. But then, what you must understand is, you know, uh, given the type of uh, traumatization that people were subjected to, there was public anger. Uh, when peaceful demonstrations began, uh, it is um, you know, it's it's not unfathomable for any of us to think that some uh, mob culture also creeps in. But Mr. Hakim, see? the point so, that a lot of people seem to be missing here is the fact that uh, the Aragale or the revolutionary movement that you uh, referred to it as was in existence for a period of about 100 days or even a little bit more. It was only one specific act of what some call state-sponsored violence that triggered these incidents in the country. So when you have uh, an act of violence of that nature that was uh, telecast live not only to Sri Lanka but to the entire world and it's, it's very clear that that was the beginning. That was where the violence began. But uh, looking at the debates in Parliament today, it seems like a lot of parliamentarians, even parliamentarians who were involved uh, in this initial incident, this initial incident of violence where uh, the Aragale protest site was attacked by uh, government supporters right after a meeting uh, where the then Prime Minister said that uh, he will uh, continue uh, in office, he is not uh, afraid of uh, challenges and that he will not back down in the face of challenges. Um, this initial incident seems to have uh, been forgotten. I mean, it's it's uh, quite um, it's quite understandable uh, that uh, in the history books of Sri Lanka, if this incident, this one specific incident that started all of this violence, is completely erased at the rate that we are going at. You know, it's obvious that uh, the current president, with you know, he is a very experienced politician. Um, he must also, by hindsight, know where um, all this anger came from and then he should uh, realize he was an opponent of the Rajapaksas for a long period of time. Uh, but now he's seen as somebody who is in hand in glove with the Rajapaksas to uh, deny the purpose of the so-called uh, uh, silent revolution that took place. It's not altogether silent uh, when you look at the impact that it has created. Um, then he went on uh, talking about uh, um, preventing government officers being occupied forcibly by the protesters. You know, what really had happened was, uh, uh, you know, in, in their uh, zeal with the type of uh, uh, anger that everybody was uh, 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 prone to, you know, it, it really, uh, you know, nobody could imagine that uh, such an overpouring of uh, public sentiment would result in uh, in such a short period of time. Uh, you Mr. Know, Hakim, you said that people, uh, you leaders said that out of the country. The president, current president, Ronald Vikramasinghe, was the opponent of the Rajapaksas for a long period of time. Um, there are people who now say that he wasn't really uh, an opponent of the Rajapaksas. Um, I think even a foreign journalist raised this question quite angered the current president. Uh, but uh, you being a politician who has worked with the current president for an extended period of time, during which uh, he was an opponent of the Rajapaksas, was, was he really an opponent in, in your perspective? Well, he, for all purposes, while he has was a political opponent, um, to me, during the times I served under him, he was a he was seen uh, as a uh, classic uh, Westminster model Democrat. 
in the in the sense that he would listen to the opposition uh, talk to them and he had a uh, uh, you know it, it was uh, you know he was not too uh, of course politically they are they oppose each other but when it comes to uh, normal friendship beyond parliament i mean he maintained uh, links with them i mean that has been i mean uh, quite apart from what uh, a person like uh, 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 Ranjan Ramanayaka says, you know, Mungukkama Yalui Malli. You see, I mean, that was a very cynical kind of comment. But yet, uh, the fact is, you know, all of us are quite friendly towards people in the opposition. But then when it comes to politics and their policies, we oppose them vehemently, we, we uh, attack each other in parliament. But that doesn't mean that we are we're going to do the same thing in the lobbies. You see, it, it, of course, occasionally, sometimes uh, anger flares up and then, you know, you, you have fisticuffs also happening. But then, you see, when you look at the way in which the current president, as soon as he took, his, took office, he unleashed this type of state terror on a set of people who already live in the uh, buildings that they were occupying. They had already announced that they are going to quit those offices and they were in the process of leaving those places and then suddenly you uh, uh, unleashed his violence on them and that was quite unwarranted and this is why I think um, this whole uh, uh, issue is being is come under such public scrutiny and people are criticizing it. So even the international community, I mean, we are losing the goodwill, at least in the, in the short term. He needs to build that goodwill. And he, being a capable, experienced politician, he must, he must understand. But I think he, he is trying to give this strong man image to those people who voted for him to satisfy their ego a little bit or to massage their, uh, the feeling of indignity they have suffered. Hmm. So he is, uh, I think this is what is motivating him. And this is totally unwarranted and this is going to leave a lot of bad taste. And uh, I believe, uh, and then getting people like uh, uh, MP Sanat Nishanta to come on public TV and try to equate these uh, uh, protesters with the armed rebellion that took place against the government in hmm. the 70s, 80s and also in the north and the east through the LTT. And um, uh, and telling that the former president was uh, dealing with them, uh, dealing them uh, with them with velvet hands, hmm. and uh, uh, he, sh uh, it, we, we must come them. down hard on them and crush them, and and that too coming from a member of parliament who was arrested, uh, who uh, uh, who was, uh, I think he's still facing charges hmm. for what happened uh, in golf is on on uh, May 9th, I believe. Hmm. So. I mean, this type of uh, uh, propaganda by the wrong type of people is is adding insult to injury, and this is this is going to say uh, this this is what is causing a serious credibility problem for the president. I mean, all of us want uh, to give the current president some uh, um, breathing space, some breathing space to uh, uh, because all of us are tired with what has happened, but. Uh, but if you go on with the kind of witch hunt that they are now going uh, ahead with, um, uh, hunting um, all these protesters, searching for them, um, arrest warrants being taken, um, and then fabricating um, uh, all types of uh, <laughs> uh, charges against them, uh, trying to resort to, now for instance, uh, going and dusting all the windows in the presidential secretariat and uh, um, the president's house. Checking for the number to, of missing uh, yeah, glass balls. Uh, glass balls <laughs> and, and, and dusting for finger, fingerprints. Right. I mean, if you saw the number, thousands and thousands of people throng those uh, places. I think the people were uh, with a sense of deja vu. They, mm. they went in to uh, all these, um, uh, you know, state houses uh, and then they were virtually celebrating the, the type of uh, uh, the, 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 the revolution they have finally achieved. Mm. So, I mean, these were 
general public who went there in such large numbers of course when you when you climb those uh, stairs and balustrades might break and some glasses may have broken of course some uh, miscreants also would have crept in hmm. uh, through that and would have uh, stolen a few things but you can't blame the entire movement for this you see so i i i believe there has to be a little bit of magnanimity um, you know uh, forgive and forget uh, attitude and also mr rao fakim people are really looking at parliament and things that are happening in parliament now um uh, like i said before uh, people people were people were under a lot of pressure like what you said um, and um despite what has happened people are now seeing a huge disconnect between how ordinary citizens are treated and how parliamentarians uh, so called privileged uh parliamentarians are treated uh because uh, similar to the violence that occurred in the presidential secretariat in the president's house of course violence is not condoned anywhere and uh, there were certain incidents like you said of of miscreants going in uh, stealing items and and those need to be prosecuted there is no argument there but uh, we didn't see the same amount of vigor or any action being taken when for 3 days mr rao fakim back in 2009 uh, 2018 i believe when there was a 52 day government there were scuffles in parliament uh, many parliamentarians uh, broke items inside parliament some of those microphones that were broken were hundreds and hundreds of thousand rupees uh, in 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 cost uh, and also police officers were assaulted uh, we saw uh, very famous uh, parliamentarians who were also involved in the attack uh, on uh, ggg uh, throwing uh, throwing chairs at these police officers i believe these images are available so there is a huge disconnect between how people are treated and how parliamentarians are treated i'm i'm just being informed that we need to quickly cross over to a short commercial break but right on the other side we will pick uh, parliamentarian rauf hakim's brain on what he thinks about parliamentary privilege stay tuned you're watching news line live news first news line proclamation of state of emergency passed in parliament paksha chanda ekasi ebi sai vipaksha va chanda hata tunai yojana ava sammatai is there a crackdown on activists shooting close to the gampaha court complex malli kauda citizen journalists know your rights and limits samaj madhya jala haraha puravesi madhya karane niyalena oba danuwath biya yutu neetime ramu alala samvidhana kerena vishesha wedamuluwa agostu 7 wanada adama liya padijwanna vimasim bidoy 76ai 388 21 11 organized by mim maharaja institute of management News first news line Welcome back uh, you're watching news line live just before the commercial break we were speaking a bit about how people are treated differently while parliamentarians people the people's representatives are treated differently and when when i say differently i mean the standards that they are held up to usually at least uh, what i learned Uh, in my textbooks uh, that i studied uh, uh, when i was at law college and so on and so forth was uh, that uh, public representatives are hold are held at higher standards uh, they need to maintain a certain level of decorum because they not only represent themselves but they represent the people their constituents the people who voted for them but um, it seems as if in sri lanka the wires have switched the roles have reversed and people are being held at very very high standards while parliamentarians practicing a culture of forgive and forget no this is uh, you know normally uh, members of parliament and their conduct is governed by the standing orders of parliament and we also have a code of conduct for uh, parliamentarians and when they are breached and then uh, uh, complaints are made you know you the speaker appoints uh, uh, committees to go into it under the parliamentary privileges act 
uh, and I have served in several such com committees as a matter of fact both uh, on the 52 day incident and thereafter uh, there was this classic incident where uh, Mr. Manushan Anekara was chased down the hallways of parliament uh, to attack him and by one of, the, one of his uh, colleagues in the cabinet no. who is now sitting with him, uh, you know there was a committee that was appointed and I was serving in that committee um, and we did uh, reprimand the action. We in fact viewed the um, footage. video footage uh, that was available in the lobbies of parliament to see what was happening and we also interviewed um, members who were seen uh, to be uh, trying to um, uh, intervene or participate or who whom we felt obviously from the optics of it what was happening so uh, a thorough examination of events were held and then we uh, did uh, recommend uh, certain action um, against uh, certain members but then you know most of the time uh, in 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 parliament you know this type of camaraderie also takes over and then we um, you know with a with a mild kind of uh, uh, warning and then uh, warning against repetition of such actions people are let go but and this is this is this is this is why people are also angry why not to do that to the to to the protesters i mean protesters after all you have no solid evidence of them being personally present in and uh, at um, uh, events where violence took place. I mean, these are all on suspicion because they were the leaders of the protest movement. Hmm. Most of them are, you know, uh, uh, chased after on a witch hunt uh, in order to take revenge from them. This is the problem. So, I mean, when, when there is a massive mob that had been involved and there had been a few miscreants who have uh, in engaged in some kind of arson activity or some violence. So you just can't put it on the... Now, for instance, today, um, not not just the government MP. Now, uh, uh, Mr. Um, Kumar Velgama made a very impassioned plea in Parliament um, talking about the trauma he had to suffer. <laughs> he was beaten up uh, um, somewhere in Kalutara while he was uh, getting back home. Um, mercilessly beaten up and then nobody uh, could intervene or help him because he was he was somebody who was against he was from the very outset he was against uh, the former president uh, um, Gotabe Rajapaksa he was very vocal about it and people knew about it despite the fact when it was told that he is the one who had been in the forefront in, in criticizing Mr. Gotabe Rajapaksa people didn't uh, care a damn I mean they said he was the one of the 225 we must um, uh, give him the treatment and they mercilessly beat him and that he uh, he in fact recounted that trauma today in parliament but now these are things that could happen when when a mob takes over things so so we we need to we need to restore order but then you know if you have an, a state of emergency declared why can't you pursue these things under normal laws now state of emergency is also going to have other ramifications for the country because no investor is going to come when there is instability like this, hmm. right? The government has to be mindful of this. Of course, I, I, I think I heard the, um, um, the chief whip of the government saying today that it is going to be only for a short period. I hope they will have uh, um, the sanity of mind uh, not to pursue this state of emergency beyond a point. I think they should uh, unwind the emergency as fast as possible and then pursue these things under normal laws. Okay. Because that's the way in which you can create normalcy in the country, at least the perception of normalcy. Uh, Mr. Hakim, um, we were speaking a lot about the past and not enough about the future. We're in the final few minutes of the show. I've, I've received a few questions as well uh, from some of our viewers. Uh, just to put that in a nutshell, uh, they believe that the opposition, um, your group in parliament, uh, the Sri Lanka Muslim Congress, the Samagi Janabalavegia, and many other opposition parties should have done more when the offer was made to form an all-party government. What is the current stance of your contingent in Parliament on forming an all-party government uh, and what is, in your perspective, the way forward? 
Now, this matter has, is being discussed within the opposition. Of course, there has to be a very sincere attempt to form an all-party government. It can't be just uh, um, by poaching members from parties and then giving them ministries. You can't call that an all-party government. And we also understand that the perilous state in which the economy is, it is incumbent on the opposition to lend our support to see that we come out of this uh, morass that we have got ourselves into and we have we owe a duty uh, to the people of the country and particularly those people who had staged this uh, unprecedented revolution in the country um, the vast number of people who backed this uh, uh, these protesters to uh, at least come thus far though there is a lack of legitimacy uh, when it comes to the public perception uh, to the current administration whether we are going to lend that that extra credibility by joining them and um, taking uh, the risk in in being painted with the same brush right uh, is something that we have to decide very soon but that all depends on a on a sincere approach to the opposition and also with a clear common minimum program to achieve certain targets and also to go for uh, an election as soon as possible because um, we must concede that uh, the mandate all of us have received is virtually uh, gone uh, with the perception that is there in the country. So it's, it's rather better for us to go for a quick election as soon as possible but then within a shortest possible time if we can have a common minimum program to achieve certain objectives we might try and we should try and do that and also these constitutional reforms and parliamentary reforms to engage the opposition also in decision making these are things that we we can implement and i'm sure uh, the president is possessed of these things he's going to um, try and um, engage with the opposition soon and particularly the constitutional reforms that he has promised he must uh, bring forth those things uh, as fast as possible and try to see whether he can convince the opposition um, to uh, get on board. Of course, uh, Mr. Hakim, um, the people at the end of the day uh, want a solution. Like you said before, people are tired. Uh, Sri Lanka is in a precarious situation and um, our, everybody in Sri Lanka is worried as to how much further we can continue like this. We've been suffering with this political instability, economic crisis for almost a year now. Uh, this year seems like it's whizzed by but it, it just feels so long. Uh, but uh, we all hope and pray uh, that uh, these matters are amicably discussed in Parliament so that violence does not pour out into the street. Uh, and these matters are resolved as quickly as possible so that Sri Lanka can get back on the track of development for our future and those of future generations. Thank you very much, uh, Parliamentarian Ralph Hakim, for joining us for this discussion. Uh, thank you very much to all our viewers out there for tuning in. And of course, uh, do stay safe. Uh, we are in a state of emergency. Uh, be careful in everything that you do, whether it's voicing your concerns, uh, there are certain regulations that have come into effect. It's best that you uh, appraise yourself of what these regulations are because uh, the lack of knowledge on what laws exist is no excuse to commit a crime. Thank you very much. Take care and God bless. Thank you, Shalon, for having me in your